You didn't like the last Jonas Blazer Games videos. I want to provide a lot of value to you, so we're gonna switch it up. All of the interesting stuff will be front-loaded right now, and then after that there will be a gameplay portion. So if you like the game, if you want to keep watching, then you can do so. Otherwise, you just watch the first five minutes of the video, then you're done. Tempus X Machina, so we're gonna do 10 things you can learn from Tempus X Machina. And then um, for each of those points, one main takeaway you can take away for your own games, for your own projects. So let's start with the positives. The game has a very well thought out story. The tip I can give for you is put a lot of effort into actually building the world that your story plays in. How does that world work? How do the people in this world behave? What's the history of this place? The more you know about the place, the better. And I think that's something the creator did a good job in. Nice. Do that in your games as well. Then we have a really good main character, one you can really identify with and I couldn't tell if it was male or female. Probably it's pretty obvious but I didn't figure it out and I consider that a good thing because that allows you to identify a lot more with it. The main takeaway from this is use a main character that everybody can identify with. That will probably help them to enjoy the experience. I'm not completely sure if this is true in all cases because sometimes you also like role-playing characters you don't identify with at all. That can be interesting too. There are different approaches to this but in general playing somebody you can identify with is probably superior in most situations. Then one thing I really appreciated is that I didn't die immediately when I fell into the hole in the dungeon into the cliff and the game was a bit forgiving I just restarted next to the cliff and lost a tiny bit of health nothing too problematic so that was pretty cool uh, especially in the beginning be a bit forgiving to your players allow them to make mistakes because they will make mistakes punish them them too harshly for that is in my opinion not a good thing so do that in your games as well then I also really like the parts with the environmental storytelling. The main takeaway, if you want to tell a story in your game, use environmental storytelling whenever possible. It's an awesome way to tell stories. It makes your world so much more interesting. So my favorite example in this game was um, in the temple and there was a room where I assumed the priest female thingy. <laughs> the woman in the temple sleeps there. This way you can learn a bit about how she lives and what, which can, what kind of person she is, how her room looks. Tells you actually a lot about her. A lot more than you could write in pure text or in dialogues. You know, whenever there are some things lying around on the ground you just keep start wondering who put them there, what happened here. So the more you can do that the better. So pack your world full with content and this is not done perfectly in this game but there are some places where it works really well. There are other places where it doesn't work so well, where it feels a little empty. Use environmental storytelling, good job. Then another thing I liked about the game is that it didn't front load the tutorial. This is a mistake I feel like a lot of new game developers make. They just make one screen in the beginning that shows all of the controls and that's the very first thing you see when you open the game. You just start playing and then you get bombarded with different buttons you can press. That's just not a good way to go about it. And in this game I could play through a bit of dialogue, you know, I get to know the characters a bit and then once I get into the world, when I really start playing, then I see the controls and also not too much at once, just a couple of buttons so I can remember all of them, it's not really that big of a deal. And then you learn one thing after another. Just showing everything right at the start, all of the controls is just not a good idea. Or I, I liked the way it was handled in this game. Then let's go to the negatives. Actually, I have to admit I'm not that big into RPG games. I don't have a lot of experience playing RPG games. So that's just something I want to mention. Here are my thoughts. I got stuck in the first dungeon. I didn't know where to go. I had a key, but I couldn't open the door and I didn't know where to go. So my tip is prevent people from getting stuck. There's nothing worse than making a complete game with tons of levels and then people get stuck in level three and they can't continue playing and they just quit. That sucks big time. Make sure people don't get stuck. And I know these kinds of dungeons are supposed to be puzzles. You should try to figure out how they work and how you need to interact with them. So one smart way I think you could could go about this is add a couple of clues. If I don't know where to go I will keep searching around and yeah maybe I will not find the correct way all by myself but maybe I will find a sign that gives me a hint or maybe I will find a chest that has a riddle on it that also helps me to find the correct direction. Just make sure I keep finding hints if I keep searching because finding absolutely nothing and still not knowing where to go is a bit stupid. 
Then one thing I noticed and that bothered me is that the conversations are very gamey, so they don't really fulfill any kind of purpose other than giving you a reason to walk around in the world and slash monsters and stuff like that. Alright, I hope you're ready, Myro. I will try to assist you as best as I can when you need me. Thank you, my lady. Good luck. This is something that bothers me in a lot of games. Yes, I feel like you can do that in certain kinds of games. Me personally, I think if your game is about the story, about the role-playing part, if you're making an RPG game, I think the conversations need to be a bit more interesting than that. There needs to be a bit more depth to the conversations. And the most important thing to do that, I feel like, is adding a little bit of conflict, a bit of a little bit of disagreement, disharmony. Everybody I've talked to has just completely agreed with everything I've said and everybody's just happy and yeah, you will make it and there's no friction at all just. That makes it so boring and gamey and it's just, okay, do this next, do that next. Sorry, but we will be taking these. <laughs> Maybe next time you might want to use a stronger barrier. <laughs> Though that wouldn't have mattered anyway. Oh, you don't! Yep, that seems about right. Oh well then, alright, I get those two, whoever they are, and get the gems back. Wonderful, I know I can count on you and your lovely goddess. Now let us go back up, shall we? and you will do it and it's not like super duper boring but it's also nothing special it's just super gamey as i've said so i want to learn a bit more about the characters by how they talk the best way to learn about those characters and to get to know them a bit better and make the conversations a bit more interesting is to add a bit more disagreement and a bit more friction so they shouldn't even if they like each other even if they get along really well with each other they shouldn't agree on everything there should be a a bit of disagreement and a bit of friction. That's what I think, that's my opinion. Hope that makes sense. If you have some tips how to write better dialogue, put them in the comments, I'm very interested in that. I'm not an expert on that at all. Then the next takeaway is put autosave in your game. It's not acceptable not to have autosave in your game in 2018. Your game should save automatically, no matter what game you're making. No excuses. <laughs> Absolutely none. I got stuck in the dungeon and I actually think I broke the game. I got stuck in the menu I couldn't go back to the dungeon so I quit the game and I reopened it and all of my progress was gone I couldn't click continue. That's probably because the game isn't finished yet That will probably go into your game later But just a little reminder for everybody you need to have autosave in your game It's not acceptable not to have that then another thing that was mildly annoying is that in order to play the game I had to download the RPG Maker package or something like that and yeah stuff like that is a bit annoying and I think nobody other than your friends and me are going to do that if you want somebody to play your game it's a really big ask to download something in the first place and then if you tell them yeah but you need to download this package as well uh, go to this link and download this too uh, I think most people will be gone and they will not play it so th this is really <laughs> just I don't think this is just me feel free to tell me but I don't think anybody wants to download any additional stuff just to play your game then what can you do about it I think there is a way to solve this problem because there are RPG maker games on Steam for example they pretty sure they install that automatically and maybe RPG maker games cannot do that but you can always pack your RPG maker game in an installer so People can at least download both of these things at once and they both get installed at once. There, I'm sure there are some good tutorials out there. Honestly, I don't know how to do that. I don't know if it's really possible. I think it's possible. I don't know how hard it is. And if you want people to play your game, don't make them download additional stuff. And I mean it really well. I want people to play your game. I want you to succeed. And then the last point I have for every Zelda inspired game ever because there are a ton of Zelda inspired games out there. Why shouldn't I play Zelda instead? And your answer might be okay. 
um, you have played Zelda already, then you can play my game next if you want more. But honestly, there are a ton of Zelda games. I can just keep playing Zelda games. What I'm asking you is, why should I play your game instead of a Zelda game? That's just something you need to answer and you need to make the answer relatively obvious both in the game and as well on the internet wherever you present your game. That doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it, doesn't mean I think it's a bad game, I think it's a pretty cool game, it's a pretty awesome project. I can see that a lot of work and a lot of love went into it. Here's some gameplay <laughs> of me <laughs> playing the game. So I will just play this Tempus X Machina. I'm pretty excited, hope this is gonna be a good game. But looks pretty nice already. It's made with RPG Maker and I'll just treat this like a let's play now because all the good stuff and all the content uh, was already before this. So let's just click on new game. On enter. Okay, we need to click on enter. Ah, you've come. Thank you, Myru. Of course! What? You briefly told me before sounds quite serious. I'm afraid so. I sense great danger approaching the world below. I cannot let such a thing come to pass. Don't worry. You can count on me. I know. That's why I'm asking you to undertake this task. Now then, do you know what? That once you're there, you will only have your armor and sword. Oh! Now what else should he have? I don't know. That's fine. I can manage in any situation. I mean, armor and sword, that's quite something. Don't know what he's so upset about. Alright, I hope you're ready, Myru. I will try to assist you as best as I can when you need me. Thank you, my lady. Good luck. Okay, so far I have to say it looks... Firstly, looks quite nice. I wonder where the graphics are from. And the music also. I also like the music. The music's pretty awesome. So let's see how this continues. Myru, can you... Myru, can you hear me? Yep. This telepathy thing sure does take some getting used to. Haha. <laughs> it's strange, I know. But on to business. Simply head north and meet a priestess at a temple of mine in the nearby village. She will explain the rest from there. Alright, can do. Okay. So shift to dash, I think shift just makes me run. Okay, but that's fine too. E to interact and Q to quit. All right, and I can see my HP, my MP and my XP. So let's see what happens here. Can I interact with this shield? Oh no, I didn't remember where to go, but I think I ne just need to go north. That's what she said. My roof, or however she's called. Okay, surprisingly, I quite enjoy this. I was a bit skeptical when I saw the screenshot because there are a lot of RPG Maker games out there that are Zelda like. <laughs> the market is already pretty saturated, but so far, I really enjoy this. Can I talk to any of these guys? I do enjoy seeing new faces every now and again. Okay, I forgot to talk to them. I was too focused on playing. I'm not a good let's player. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what does you he has to say? Howdy there! Fan fancy a drink? Sure. Alright, why do you want have him? Uh duh Bye. Healthy drink? Okay, I cannot buy anything. See ya! Okay, I feel like here's a bit too much empty space. This doesn't look all that interesting here. Up here it looks fine and here because there's something going on here, not so much. Actually, I have absolutely no experience with RPG Maker. I assume you didn't create all those graphics yourself. That would be absolutely insane. If so, you have my respect. 
but obviously there's nothing wrong with using some assets if they look fine. But as I've said, I have no experience with RPG Maker, so I don't know how many people use those. Maybe if you played a couple of RPG Maker games, you're already pretty sick of those assets. I have no idea. I kind of like them, because I don't play a lot of games like this. Haven't seen this before. Nope, never mind, it's locked. Uh, I was in there. Let's not go there. Mm, can I go here as well? All sold out. Closed until new shipments arrive. This was it says on the door. Oh well, I'll come back later. The music is so chill. So yeah, it's feel like it's nicely decorated, but there could be a bit more going on here. But obviously, I just missed that I can go up here, so that's probably where it continues, right? Eh, hello. Oh goodness, you don't look like you're from around here. I'm Princess Eva. Who might you be? I'm Mairu, one of the royal guardians that protects the goddess Mara. I was told to come find you. Then you payers have been answered once again. Oh god, I'm so bad at reading. Oh my stars, then my prayers have been answered once again. Yep. I think actually I'm not fully sure why I'm here. Ah then, let me explain. See, for the past few days I've been having such a horrible vision in my dreams. Of terrible future events, bad things to come. Bad things? How bad? End of the world bad! Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's bad. Quite. Anyways. They seem to involve the two time gems hidden deep beneath this temple. Time gems? Yes. If they fall into the wrong hands, the whole the whole of time could be destroyed or changed into Well, I would rather not think of such thing things. Is that correct English? The whole of times? The whole of time? Hmm. The whole time, maybe. Not sure. But can you just steal them? Ah, but <laughs> not steal. <laughs> but can you just steal them behind some sort of barrier? Then, if they are so dangerous? Oh, I have. Unfortunately, my visions pretty much always come true, though they were never so serious. Natural disasters, bandits—you name it. I would simply pray to our goddess, and it would be taken care of almost instantly. Yeah. Then why don't you pray again? Start praying! But now that you're here, I can rest a bit easier. Yeah, because now you don't have to do the heavy work and I do it for you, right? Sure. You can handle such a thing, yes? Um, of course. But I'd only have my sword and my armor. Now then, allow me to show you the time gems so you know what you will be protecting. Alright, lead the way. Or maybe we can steal them. Okay, I don't... I'm actually not surprised the time gems are stolen. If anybody in this world can teleport around, then probably not that hard to steal them. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm used to the whole teleporting thing. Where are we though? We are very deep beneath the temple. Now come with me. Here they are, the time gems. Oh wow, they're rather nice to look at. Yes, indeed, such pretty things hold immunerable power. It's quite interesting, really. Oh, and that glowing circle, is that the barrier spell you spoke of? It looks similar to the to magic that Lady Mara uses. Yes, it is. It's strong enough to contain their power without disturbing them. Hey, speaking of, how is that these shiny rocks are so dangerous? Well, the gems themselves aren't inherently destructive. They simply hold powerful magic within them connected to time itself. If someone were to tap into said power, well, that's what could lead to the destruction I've been talking about. 
That's right, someone like... Oh, yeah, they just teleported in there just like I expected. <laughs> no surprises here. Sorry, but we will be taking these. <laughs> Maybe next time you might want to use a stronger barrier. <laughs> no, that wouldn't have mattered anyway. Oh, you don't. You. Yep, that seems about right. They stole the gems. I can't believe I failed already. Oh, don't worry too much. Like I said, my visions usually come true. But doesn't that mean the world is gonna end then? Well, my visions never get that far actually. If that were the case, then I would have seen that take place. Which must mean that you get them back. That's why I'm not as distraught as one would be in this case. Don't know that word. Nice word. Oh well then. Alright, I get those two, whoever they are, and get the gems back. Wonderful. I know I can count on you and your lovely goddess. Now let us go back up, shall we? So now what? Any ideas how I should try to find those two? Actually it's not a matter of trying to find them. We simply have to find a way to disturb what disrupt whatever it is they are planning. They will show up sooner or later regardless. Oh, good point. Why will they show up? Why do they need to come back? They have the... Uh, they have the crystals, right? So why should they come back? So do you have any sort of idea on what they may be planning? Yes, actually, that's... Thanks to my visions. From what I've seen, they will try to argument their magical powers with the energy of the time gems. Once they've done that, they will most likely begin to try and change the very flow of time itself. Mostly by rewriting the past to their liking. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. But how are exactly are we gonna be able to stop that? <laughs> Simple. Well, in a sense, our lovely goddess has put a few things in our world to assist should this very situation arise. Wait, you don't mean... Yes. Seven reality crystals. Lady Mara really likes her shiny rocks. Well, they are rather nice to look at. Regardless, you must gather them all so we can use their power to contain the magic of the time gems. They're all well guarded and scattered around this land. But I'm sure this will not prove too difficult for one such as yourself. Uh, right. Now before you go on your way, here are a few things to help you. It's not much, but I hope shall assist you. Oh, gems. Now I can buy sweet potions. Oh, what are these herbs? These special items will allow you to anchor yourself in time, should anything terrible happen to you. It will give you another chance to try again. Oh, that sounds rather helpful. Now then, I wish you well on your quest. Once you step outside, I'm sure the goddess will tell you where you need to begin. Alright then, I'm off. Okay. Let's explore. Mm, this is quite nice. You don't need to be here. Okay, then let's go outside. Oh, she's a girl. I'm <laughs> sure I played a boy. <laughs> oh. Or do or is it a boy? I have no idea. My root? Oh, she's talking to me again with telepathy. Lady Mara, I presume you were watching all of that, huh? Yes, I saw everything. I'm sorry for failing so quickly. No no, it's alright. I had a feeling this was going to come to pass sooner or later. Which is why I created the reality crystals in the first place. Don't worry, you can count on me. I won't fail again. Haha, <laughs> fear not, I know you will succeed. Okay, first begin by he heading east once you leave the village. You will fin find a mine in the forest. The first crystal lies within its lowest depths. So, yeah, why don't we just teleport there? And where do I need to go? East, right? 
east, let's go east. Oh, it's a beautiful forest. Can I fight them? Where's my sword? I thought I had sword and armor. Where are they? Well, then let's just avoid them for now. Nothing unusual here. Do, 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 do. Oh, that thing looks creepy. <laughs> what? You found a magical bell. It will jingle if the current room has treasure or a key. Ah, okay. That's nice. Can I go here? 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 Okay, this room has treasure or a key. It's very nice. That this is right when going outside here. Can I interact with anything here? Okay, maybe I cannot do anything here yet. Or do I need to go down in the correct place? Nope. Oh! What happens if I press... Okay. Ah! I see. I have a sword. Uh, that doesn't really feel like it works so well. Health times one. Oh, <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> it's a treasure chest. <laughs> oh, that's oh, I'm so stupid. Uh oh. Can I go through that with a key? Yeah, yeah, sure. What? Okay. Seems like I cannot go through that. And I'm running out of HP, that's not good. A dungeon map. Items. And where am I? I don't see where I am. But we have a key now. Maybe we can use it over here. Mm, how do I get past these stones? Let's have a look at the map again. Where is the entrance? Uh, is, is that the entire dungeon? Probably. Um, okay, so the entrance is probably where the white dot is. So... Maybe I need to go up? Don't know. But I think there's a locked door. I can't go up, but I also can't go to the right. Where can I go though? And how do I get out of this menu? Where is continue? If I press Q, I go into this menu and then if I press Q here, just go back and forth. 
Uh, that sucks. I think I've found a bug. Mm, let's hope the game saved somewhere. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. That was Tempus X Machina. Wish I could show you a bit more, but I'm also playing this quite for a while now, so probably fine. I think I got quite a quite an impression 